Hello class, welcome back to your therapeutic exercise course. Today we are going to be speaking about the sacroiliac joint and some therapeutic exercises that you can incorporate into your programs. Uh, we had a nice long talk and lecture about the sacroiliac joint dysfunction, where it stems from, you know, we know that it's mostly a chronic development. It's something that can be initiated from biomechanics and the surrounding musculature. Uh, so identifying that it is sacroiliac joint dysfunction and not necessarily a disc pathology is very, very important. Um, that will help to help they will help you design whatever the therapeutic exercise program is that is most appropriate for that patient. So obviously protocols are something that can be written, but it's very, very specific and it should be very individualized to that person's specific deficits. Um, and also understanding that you can't just treat every sacroiliac joint dysfunction exactly the same whether the muscles that are impacted are on the anterior or posterior, if they're internal rotators or external rotators, all of those are very important into identifying what the true issue is and therefore addressing it. Today, I'm going to walk you through a few exercises that I have found to be very progressive in treating sacroiliac joint dysfunction. A lot of this has to do with playing a very, very big role in the activation of your core, having very good stability through having that pelvic neutral. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate some of these exercises so that way you can have a better grasp on what I mean by that last slide I had in the lecture that indicated a therapeutic exercise program that you can follow. So the first and foremost is what we're going to discuss is pelvic neutral. This is a very, very important concept that if you cannot establish that right away, then you're not going to have an effective rest of your therapeutic exercises because you have to in incorporate the element of pelvic neutral. This is a very, very important position. What this does is it helps to stabilize your core. So what is your core? So your core is in entailed of a lot of different factors. But the biggest thing is that we need to start from the ground. So the very, very deepest of the muscles, we've got the transverse abdominis, quadratus lumborum, the iliopsoas, all of those muscles are very important for the stability of your spine and for also the pelvic neutral position to be held into. So pelvic neutral, and I'll show you a very, uh, the way that I feel is very, uh, effective in explaining how to find pelvic neutral. This is something that should be used in everyday life. It is something that can be used with every single exercise that you may do, whether it be for the sacroiliac joint or even the shoulder or the ankle, what have you. Pelvic neutral plays a very big role in following all these appropriate steps to then connect the entire kinetic chain. So first and foremost, to, de to demonstrate finding pelvic neutral. So you can think of your pelvis as a bowl and you want to tell your patient to tip their bowl all the way forward into this pelvic position. Then, so it makes a nice arching of their lower back. Now you're going to tip all the way under. So now they're tucking their hips under them. Then they're going to find that midpoint. That midpoint should allow them to slide a hand underneath, but it shouldn't be too much of a gap. You still need a little bit of curvature of that lower back. So now if they find this middle point, I'll take them and I'll say, hey, take your two fingers and you're going to press down here and you're gonna feel that contraction of your deep core of, of down here, making sure you're actually activating the appropriate area. So they go to one extreme, the other extreme, find the middle, engage, and hold it for about three seconds or so. You can do 10 reps of that. Once they are understanding of what pelvic neutral is, there's three different exercises that are incorporated in that program that are recommended that you can always try. So one that I, I find to be very effective is if we think about the sacroiliac joint, we need hip mobility, we need to open up that joint, and we need proper positioning of the posterior activators and their uh, rotators. So the three-point hip extension, well, you'll start off going into a quadruped position. You want them to find 
pelvic neutral, pelvic neutral is found, locked in. Now, you're going to have them extend out their knee, but you don't want them opening up too far, because once they open up too far, now they're going to start to make compensations. So now they lift up here, kick back, straight, and then come down, all while holding that nice pelvic neutral. This could be a three-point hip stance. This could also be called froggers. Um, either way, this position helps to engage those external rotators. Position here, nice tight core, very good extensors, then coming down to center. You can do each side about 10 times and do several, several sets of that. That is something that may take time, so maybe you need to start off them just doing passive ex internal and external rotation of their hip. The functionality of this is that they get to use that core, they get to find that pelvic neutral, and then they can sweep their hip in and out, and that will help to help stabilize their hip and to open up that joint a little bit more. So the next one I will show you It's something that I call the um, toe touch progression. So the toe touch progression is something that I find to be very effective in teaching for squat mechanics. So if you're squatting, there's going to be a lot of different activators. And some people, in, in fact, actually cause SI joint dysfunction because of the way that they're squatting and because of their uh, inability to actually contract and maintain their pelvic neutral. So you can find two plates, or you could have a half foam roll, as you see here, just two plates. What you'll do to start is you'll have them put their toes up on the angle, right? So now they're into a slight little bit of dorsiflexion. You have them reach up towards the sky, touch down, come back straight up. Now they walk forward and the heels are now raised. So there's a slight bit of dorsiflexion with the heels up. Same idea, you're going to reach up, touch down, stand back up, last one, touch down, and now from here, sitting all the way down into a very, very deep squat. They put their hands over their head. What they're now gonna do is squeeze their glutes. So they're gonna tuck those hips under. Because right now in this position, a lot of people go into an anterior pelvic tilt, which causes stress and actually impacts that SI joint. So you want them to tuck their hips under them, squeeze their glutes, drive through their heels, and straight up. They can do this, that's, that is technically one repetition. They can do this several times. I usually have them do about 10 times just to get the message across. The more often that you enforce proper squatting mechanics, they will engage their pelvis much better. One other thing you want to look out for when they're doing that exercise is you want to make sure that their chest stays nice and tall. If their chest is leaning forward and then on their lap, then that is going to cause them to use their back too much when they actually have to lift up. And especially if you want to think about they're now in the weight room and they have a bar on their shoulders for them to now lift up. So they're going to lift with their back and not squeeze and drive up with their glutes and their quadriceps. The last exercise I will show you, which is another really good uh, exercise to fire the glutes and create stability, is you can take a TheraBand loop, depending on their strength and their ability, you can use a different uh, resistance. So I'm just using a yellow one here. You're gonna put it down and around their ankles so now it's low on their ankles. You're gonna have them do a very small squat. Now what they're going to do is they're going to pivot one side, maintaining, pivot the other. So it's a very short squat, but you have this engagement right down here. So right, I've got a little bit of abduction with that resistance, pivot and pivot. All three of these exercises can be used to identify weaknesses. It can also help them stabilize their core and thus then 
helping to relieve that SI joint dysfunction. These are just a few ideas. If you have any questions, be creative, understand each of your patient's individuality, and apply principles that you know are going to, in fact, contribute to them long-term and in a functional atmosphere.